Hello, good day, and welcome back. So let's see if the third time is a charm. This is the third time I'm trying to record this video. The previous one was way too long. Coming out of like an hour, I think it's too long. I know the last <clears throat> couple of videos, two of them were very long, but I think that was acceptable. So anyway, let's see if we can keep this down. I'm gonna record it again, and this time I'm gonna try and still make it succinct and clear, and hopefully um, that would make it shorter. All right. So we're going to be talking about type identity. And basically the reason why we want to know type identity or we're going to be talking about it is because we want to be able to recognize that when we have more than one type or even a type, let's just say, we want to understand what is that type? Like what are the characteristics of it? How does that differentiate one type from another type? And so before we get into really um, figuring out the type identity of a type, we're going to talk about name types versus or name types, which we saw some name type and on name type in the previous video. And actually when we were doing channels and maps and slices and of course structures, but we're going to really kind of nail it down what they are today, uh, hopefully. And then we're going to start discussing once we got th get those two down, then we're going to start talking about type identity and what makes uh, one type the same as another or another type different, of course. And then we're going to see the rules that govern type identity. I shouldn't really say the rules that govern type identity. I should say assignability. Um, maybe I should really change this to say, what, what, what's our assignment? Well, we're governing type identity. And we're also going to see um, what is assignability. Assign, uh, B-A-L-I-T-Y. OK, if I can spell. What is assignability? OK, um, basically. We're going to look at which type could be assigned to another type, right? What, when is it legal to do so? What can be assigned? Okay, so say that. Let's return. Okay. And so this comes from, I probably left this page too early. So this type identity, um, it really comes from here. And so yesterday, in the previous video, I showed you, we went through some of these types. And so now we're going to be talking about the properties of type and values. So when you think about identity, a layman's term, in my opinion, giving you Verrill's definition, would say um, the identity is the attributes, properties, and characteristics about an entity that allows it to be differentiated or used for differentiation. So this is the way you're going to tell things apart, right? Or if they are the same. So if you can figure out what the properties, attributes, and the cross-section of something is, you can say whether it's the same thing as something else or it's different from something else, right? Um, and so here, let's check this out. It says two types are either identical or different. That's the exact same thing I copied and pasted here. I literally copied and pasted these two paragraphs here. I left off all this other stuff um, for the next page and the next slide, and we're going to talk about some of them. Okay, well, actually, I, I don't really talk about those directly, but you, you should definitely read those. Um, so two types are either identical or different. That's it. That's all you need to really know is that two types are either identical or they're different. That makes sense to me. Okay, as I hopefully that makes sense to you too. Two name types are identical if their type names originate in the same type spec. So for that, let's go to our code, but before we go to the code, we're going to go back to the specification and understand what a type spec is. Okay, so the type spec, if we click here, we'll see the type specification, type declaration, is equals to the literal keyword type, which we see here, and then open parentheses, one of these two things, which is the type specification, which is this, which is some identifier filed by a type, or, or, it's this literal keyword type, or open curly braces and then type space, um, type specification with, you know, semicolon at the end to end it, right? But we didn't care about the last part because that's basically the same type specification here. The only thing you're saying is that you can enclose it in literal parentheses. Um, so this would take care of this one, right? So you have type, literal parentheses, and then type specification, which is this identifier, a name, followed by the type, and then you can repeat, you know, multiple of these guys. Okay. All right. So when you have multiple types as defined, you could just put them in there. It's just like, oh, we can do variables and constants. You can do types that way. Okay. So 
two types are the same if the type space is the same, if they have the same type space, which means that oh, if it says type, some type name and blah, 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 which makes sense. If, if the type name, the type specification is the same, then they are the same types. So, so um, and we know that uh, when you create types like this, they are name types. So it makes sense that two name types are the same if they look like that, if they look similar, okay? All right, so now what is a name type? So um, let's jump to our code, and we really don't even need the code from, from yesterday, um, from the previous chapter. Um, so I'm gonna pretty much delete it for now, and we'll work from there. And so I have this type um, student ID here, and so now we know this is a name type. Student ID is a name type. And that is very different than when I had, for example, I'm gonna change it from student ID and let me call this data set, okay? Is a slice of integers. And that's very different. So I can say I have var data zero, right? Which is equals to data set, which is initialized with a slice of int, and this is my data, one, five, nine, 10, 21. And so that's data zero. And of course, I can FMT that print line and print F, let's do print F, and I could say data zero. And the type of that command type, and of course, the value. And so data zero, data zero. Okay. And here we're working on FMT, that print line, print ln. Um, not FM, geez Louise, too much help. Print line, and we're working on type identity. Okay, okay, all right. So if I run this, go run main, I can see that the type of this is main. Notice the package is in. That becomes part of the type two, because if I have this same exact thing, in another package, there are two different types. Okay, all right. We will try and get to that too to demonstrate it. If I had another package with exactly the same type, different type, um, the two types are not the same. All right. So that's a name type. So data zero, the type of it is a name type which you can see there. But I can also create another data set one, and I can do it this way. And now what I have is something that looks very similar. You might be tempted to think they're the same, but they're not the same. They have the same underlying type, but they're not the same, okay? And how do I know at all they're not the same? Well, if I run my trusty little program here, you can see they're not the same. One is main that data set, and the other one is a slice of int. Now they do have the same underlying type, but these are two very different types. This is a name type, and this is an unnamed type, okay? So this is an example of where you have an unnamed type. Int is a named type, int itself, but slice of int is an unnamed type. Map of int to string is an unnamed type. Array of some int, so if I put, you know, five in there or four or whatever, um, five, that is a different type, but it's also an unnamed type. So when you create arrays, slices, maps, channel, those are unnamed type. If you want them to have a name, then you have to use this type keyword to give them a name. And that makes them very distinct and separate. So if I have data set like that, and then I create another data set called data set two, even though both of these data sets have, you know, the same underlying type, guess what? There are two different types still, two different types. Still two different types. Okay, and so now I have two name types and still one unnamed type. If I run this, I can see, here we go, two different name types. Now, let's go back to the case. So now I hope you understand what is name type versus unnamed type. Let's just do one more example of our unnamed type. So I'm going to have m colon equals, and it doesn't matter how I do this. So m0 colon equals map of, you know, string to string or whatever. It doesn't really matter. 
that is our unnamed type. M1 of our M1 of dictionary, where dictionary, I'm going to define it to be type dictionary is a map of string to string. All right? Those are two. This is a name type and this is an unnamed type. And again, I'm going to print those out and we'll get to see it. So um, uh, there should be one, two, um, two, two. So command D, uh, what is it? Uh, command D, yep. And then this is going to be M0. And then command D, D, and this is M1. Okay. And so now if I run this, ah, come on. It's not an expression. Ah, that's why. <laughs> I just, uh, wait a second. Where did it say? Oh, yeah, this is not an expression. There's just a type. So I need to initialize it like that. Okay. So um, that is an expression now. So I'm saying assign this to that. Um, okay. So if I run this, two different type. And it really doesn't matter if I don't create an expression, but really if I did this var and I empty, I created essentially what is a nil map, right? So I'm creating a nil map in both cases. Those are two nil maps. So if I did that, those are still two different types. One is an unnamed type. The other one is a name type. All I was doing before was initializing M with an expression and then go lang deduce the type from it which was an unnamed type. All right. Um, good. All right. So let's go back to our thing here. So now we have two name types are identical if their type name originates, originates in the same type spec. We look what the type spec look like. Type spec is type, name, and then the type expression. Um, and so that makes sense. A name type and an unnamed type are always two, always different. So we know now, when types are identical and we know when they're different. They're identical if they have the same type spec in the same package. But you're going to see that oh, you really can define the same type in package. You're going to tell you, that, oh, it's already been defined. But that is besides the point. The important thing is if the pack, there are different packages, there are different types, even if they have the same look, okay? And then a name type and an unnamed type are always different. So now we know it out there always different. It says two unnamed types are identical. So we know when two name types are the same. We know when we know that type names and name types and unnamed types are different. But now we're looking at when are two unnamed types the same. Two unnamed types are identical if their corresponding type literals are identical. That is, if they have the same literal structure and component corresponding components have identical types. That only says this, that if I'm going to create an unnamed type here, if I have a user unnamed type here, another unnamed type, so data X, for example, using the same unnamed type because it's the same exact literal expression for the unnamed types, regardless of whatever value I put in here, it doesn't matter. No. These, I can say that these two um, types are, are name types are equal, which means that all the variables created from these two unnamed types um, are the same. So I can assign them, you know, assign values from one to the other. That's all it means, right? Um, a more complex example would be, um, let's say, for example, um, so um, just for kicks and giggles, so this is data X. Another example would be something like this. If I had var P zero is struct and then inside of it, I had N is for string name and then A is for int age and then social security number is some string. Okay. If I want to just so now P here is using an on excuse me, an unnamed type, okay? And so the only way I can say it, oh, I have another variable where the two unnamed types are the same 
is if I literally have the exact same definition like that. Only now I can say that our P1, the name type used of P1 and P2 are the same. Okay. And of course, I can print this out to just make this thing happy and not stop and stop complaining. Okay. P0. Ah. Come on. Probably would have been just easier typing over this whole thing, P1. All right, so if I run this, now we can see that those two have the same, and that's why it says the corresponding type must be in the same, um, right? Like, let's go back here. It says the literal are identical. That is, they have the same literal structure and the corresponding component of identical type. So the corresponding component of identical type. We could make this here A and then this in float and then over here make it like, um, like you know, um, A int one and float in the other one. Now a question to ask is what if we change the order? Well, you know, does the order matter even if the types are the same? And to see that we can say that P0 is equals to P1 and we can see if the Go language compiler is going to complain and about about this and you can see you cannot use it in the assignment right because look the order of the components are not the same all right so they must have the same order even if they have the same exact components the same type the order of them have corresponding components of identical type right literal structure the structure have to be literally the same so you could think of the structure of this here is n S N A and over here the structure is N A S N. Very different. Okay. So structure have to be um, the same. Now this is fine. Okay. And once it's saved, it should um, thing. Well, I can run the code to show that though it is the it is fine. Um, editor is now updated. Okay. So let's get back now to this. We're trying to move through this. So this part is fine. Okay. So we've talk through all this and we understand when they're different and there's only two things to consider name types and unnamed types we looked at what a name type is and what an unnamed type is and then we said well okay if you have two one two name types this is the only condition where they're the same is if they have literally the same def type step spec unnamed types and name types are different two unnamed types are only the same when they have the literally the same structure okay so huh why is this like this? Um, escape that. Why is that? Um, okay, let's try and look at it again. Okay, better. So now assignability. This is when we ask ourselves, how which type can be assigned to which other type, or values of one type can be assigned to a variable of another type. Remember, when you're assigning, you're doing either a value, you're doing a value to a variable. Now, even if you use a variable on the, the right-hand side, it's still just going to evaluate what the variable, the value of that variable is and assign it. So what we're really, really asking is, is this, when, what can, what, what type, once evaluated, what type can I have over here for the expression for the type over here can then be stored in a variable of another type over here. And of course we know that if the both is the same type, then of course they're assignable. That, that comes without question. Thing is, are there other instances where you might be able to assign um, two different types? Um, and now we need to look at a rule. So if X is an expression, right? So a variable, a value X is assignable to a variable of type T. So we can call our variable T, for example, then. to means the variable of type T. And a value of an expression x can be assigned to a variable of type t in the following cases. The first case is if t, if x's type is identical to t. That makes absolute sense, right? If your expression x or your value x, remember an expression gets evaluated a value. So if your expression, the type of your expression, your value 
is the exact same type as the variable, of course you can assign it. Now, here's the uh, one that you got to kind of put your mind, you got to think a little bit because I was worded. If X's type is V and T have identical underlying types, right? So if your variable and your type and your, X and your, uh, your, your, your variable and your value have the same underlying type and at least one of the of them which is at least v or t is not a named type then you can assign them in other words if you have a variable and a value that have the same underlying type one of them must at least be a unnamed type a both of them could be unnamed but one of them must be unnamed so let, let me try and show you that. And this is why the video was so long the previous time I tried to uh, record it. So I'm going to start off with, um, because we were talking about underlying types. So um, let's, let's do this. Let's take away this and get rid of, of this too. Um, we might need those functions later. So uh, this print out, so let's leave that. So here I have two types. Let's call them V and let's call them T, just like in the, in the documentation. Those are two types. Now notice the underlying type is the same, but those are name type. So we already know that if you have name type, they cannot possibly be, um, <laughs> you know, if, be assignable. They're not the same. So we know that how if I had created two variables of this, var V, you know, is of type T um, V and then var T is of type T. Um, those are two different type. I cannot um, say V is equals to T. It just cannot work, okay? Because the, a name type is very distinct and separate from any other type, okay? So that we, we know. So um, if I do FMT print out FMT that print len and then I do V and T, for example. So that would allow me to print them. And so let's just show that how this, this works. So if I run this, ah, come on, semicolon, new line, what is it talking about? Uh, oh, where's the T? How did that disappear? Okay. So that works fine, right? But of course, once I try to assign them, two different types cannot happen. Absolutely cannot happen. Two very different types. So then what is this saying then? If it's saying, if X and V and T have identical underlying types, that part is true in our case. We have a variable T and we have a value of um, another type and we can make it a value or from a variable, it's, it's fine. Remember, instead if we do a value, so if we put T over here and we do um, a value, so remember when we have v over here it's still trying to read the value of v which is going to be in this variable which is of this underlying type and it still can assign it right name type so and they have the same underlying type at least one of v or t is not a name type so here we don't have at least one of them is not a name type which means not in the name type means it's our name type because there's the only two things we have we have name types and our name type so not a name type means one of them must, at least one of them have to be not a name type, which means at least one of them have to be an unnamed type. And we don't have that. So now we can see that oh, if I did this instead and I change this to an unnamed type in something, now this is going to work. And if I run this now, and you can see it works just fine. And how do I know it works just fine? Let's do this, da 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 or not. Right? And you can see it works just fine. Okay, those are the, that's the assignment. It was a copy, right? I mean, remember we're not using pointers, so it literally copies it, and it works the other way also. So if I say t is equals to equals to t, and then initialize it with this, right? I can assign it the other way also. 
I can do print out t and v and then I'll do v is equals to t instead. This assignment works because why? Because one of the, at least one of them is not a name type. In this case, v is not a name type, right? You see v here, as you can see right there, it's not a name type, it's an unnamed type. So this work on t, it's a name type. So this also work. I don't know why this is still there. All right, and so when I run this, you see, there it goes, it works. Um, well, I need to assign, oh, I override my T, um, so, oh well. Uh, let's do this. Um, so, variable T, um, uh, let's do T, T1. Okay, so variable T1, and so I'm assigning T1, all right? Just so I can give another value. Okay, and so now, I'm gonna assign it and run this, and you see, it works, okay? I can assign T1 into V, and I overwrite my V, all right? So, it works, the assignment works, if one of them is at least an unnamed type, and they have the same underlying type. Spend some time thinking about this, um, looking at it, reading over. I find that substituting on name type for this works better than if it's not a name type, that, I, personally. All right. If that's not crazy confusing and keeping you stalled there, let's move on. X is an, so another thing that's assignable. If, if X is a bidirectional channel, right, the, the value is a bidirectional channel, so let's type that down, type that up and see. So again, I'm gonna take this away to so keep this, the example sort of clear and feel free to retype these. So if X is a bidirectional channel, and so for that, we can say X zero colon equals to a channel of int. So um, actually, um, so value, so we can make a channel, make a channel of um, int. And so that's bidirectional, okay? And so that's our value. And then T, sorry. And then T is a channel type. So T is a channel type. So let's make a channel type T. So um, type T is channel of N, for example, right? And so we can, we can assign this bidirectional channel Right, we can assign a bidirectional if x type x type v and t have identical element type. Well, that's fine. If we that, that seems to make sense, if we have um, var t is of type t, and actually, this is almost sort of like the previous rule, right? In one case, we have a, a name type that's going to be created here, and where we have a name type so we can definitely say t is equals to x o right and and so that works fine also okay no problem there even though this is a name type here we have x which is a unnamed a type so so that works but what if they are both um, you know, name types. Well, we don't know how that's not going to work, even if there's the same thing, right? And all it's saying is that here, they must have identical types, and at least one of them, V or T, is not a name type, which is exactly as the previous cases. Just know that we're talking about any arbitrary types, now they're talking specifically about a, a channel, and if it's just sign up by directional channel. I would extend this to be also um, extend this to be this. Um, if you have a bidirectional channel, right, and let's call it, um, we create a bidirectional channel T. Um, let's say we create um, some, and, and, and that T is from a type, right, from a name channel. So if you create now some other channel, you say var um, in is some channel I could only read, send values into, so channel in of int, and then var out is only some channel I could read stuff from, and 
these channel, you can assign them. You can get not assign them. You can assign a bidirectional channel to them. Um, and so, of course, the type has to be the same. That makes sense. Um, whatever is being sent over the channel. But you can also assign, you know, you can say um, in is equals to um, T, for example. And you can say out is equals to T. All right. And notice that, again, T came from a type channel, type um, channel that we defined by a type. And these guys were on name type. And it's, again, is that difference of how you mix and match them? Because here you have a type one, and here you have these on. Here you have a name type, and here you have on name type, and we can assign them. And of course, we already covered that you can assign on name type. The other thing too that makes sense is that if I have bidirectional channel and I assign it to one of these unidirectional channel, it would make sense that oh, I should be able to make that assignment, but I can't do the other way around because if you try to if you create a variable t that's bidirectional and you assign a one directional unidirectional channel to it, that wouldn't that wouldn't work, right? Because you could be trying to do one operation that it doesn't permit. So that that makes it's almost like if you try to uh, fit something bigger into something that's small, smaller container. If you want to think of it that way, right? In the case I'm saying a bidirectional channel is in some ways bigger than a unidirectional channel. All right, so I'm trying to be careful to not let this run over, but uh, so I don't want to rush through it. All right, so X is the so one of the other last two ones is X is the pre-declared identifier nil, and so basically saying if X is the value nil, and T is a pointer to a, or a function or a slice or a map or a channel, and we didn't cover interface, I'm leave that up. All they're saying there is this is totally allowed. Um, we're allowed to say that we can assign to a pointer the nil value, the pre-declared nil value. We can assign to a pointer, a function pointer, a function nil value, and you'll see what I mean. And a map, the nil value, uh, a slice, the nil value, and of course a channel, the nil value, okay? And actually when we create any of these things without initializing, they're all nil, by the way. So of course we can assign nil to them. And so this doesn't complain. I'll do this f that m that s that ch. And so how do we declare this? So let's say I have var p is a pointer to int. All right? That's a pointer. That's a nil pointer. It does not point to anything. It's initialized as nil, and me assigning nil to it. Same thing. Um, var f is some function that takes some value, um, some function. That with this signature, which is a function that takes nothing and returns nothing. Of course, I could make a function that takes, you know, int for example and returns string. Regardless, that's still assigning nil to that says that f does not point to any actual function now. Um, so trying to invoke it, my program would would panic. Okay, um, but once I so because we know that our go does the default initialization, it's redundant for me to assign nil to these values because these variables I'm creating because it's already done. But it's just showing you that it's a load. Okay, this is a load assignment. Same thing as var map is map of, I don't know, string to float, for example. Same thing. It's just a nil map. And var s to some slice of, I don't know, complex, right? 32. Um, complex 64. That's also... Um, just a nil slice and of course our good friend channel which is a channel of I don't know um, T for example um, that's also a nil channel you know we didn't make it um, it's just a nil channel okay we used to need to use make to make that channel our ch channels you you make them you initialize them by making them whereas these other guys you know you can slices and map and stuff you could kind of create a value if you don't want to create a, use make runtime um, and so all these can be nil, and that's all it's showing here. String, strng, string. Okay, and so that's a load. All right, all of them are nil. Nil pointer, nil function pointer, empty map, empty slice, and channel, nil. All right, the last one. X is an on type constant representable by a value of t. So in this case, what we're saying is that we have some constant covering chapter two, 
and we can call it C, with capital C we don't need to. And we say it's equal, so which means it doesn't have any type. We could have said C is some int or whatever, but no, we're not going to give it a type. And we're going to give it some really, really big value, for example. And all they're saying is this untyped constant can be assigned to some, you know, variable of type T. So let's call it variable of type T, let's call it I is an int equals to C, so long as this variable could represent that constant. Now we know that there's a really big number and it cannot be represented in this constant. So, um, you know, this number. So it cannot fit in an int. So I should see an error message here telling me that, oh, hey, this is gonna overflow if I try to put it in an int. But guess what? If I put it in a float 64, maybe it will fit. All right, let's see. All right. So um, it says I did not use, but Notice it doesn't tell me anything but um, anything overflowing. That's because it can fit in there. Now, if it's a type constant, well, it wouldn't even let me save this in the first place. It would tell me, at all, hey, this cannot um, fit into an int, right? But it's saying, if you have an untyped constant, you can assign it to anything so long as that thing can accept the value, which kind of makes sense. If this is the constant, how big it is, then the thing you're assigning it to got to be big enough to accept it. Kind of just kind of that last one is common sense. Okay. All right. Don't want to make this video pretty long. So that's all about assignability and type identity. And so I hope this cover everything we said we we're going to do in our objective. What are name type versus unnamed types? How do we tell types that are the same? Well, simple. Depends on if it's a name type. If it's a name type, it has to be exactly the same. If on it's on name type, they have to have the under, same underlying type. And how oh, types are different? Well, two name types are different. And of course, if you have unnamed types, the only way they can be the same is if they have the same exact layout. The literal layout is the same. Even if you have the same named field, but in different order, they're different. And the rule, and those are the rules that govern identity, right? Type identity. And then we talk about what's assignable. And so anything that is the same type, of course, is assignable. And if you have an assignment between a name type and an unnamed type, that have the same underlying type, then that's assignable. And of course, two unnamed types that are identical, of course, those are assignable, right? So, okay, take care. See you in the next video. I don't mean to rush through this. I hope that um, I've been able to illustrate the type system in Go enough for you to be able to understand it. Okay, see you in the next video. Again, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate your time. If you haven't subscribed, please do spread the word post questions if you have problem with the video in terms of it didn't help you or something like that, please let me know and i'll try to find another way to explain this to you okay take care see you